Hey all, Al here. So with Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 nearly upon us, released here on the 20th of November, 3 o'clock in the morning in Australia, I just thought I'd go through a quick prep for moving from 2020 to 2024. So I decided that I'm going to go for the standard version. Check it out first of all. I you was know, up it to deluxe or premium deluxe if I want to later on. So what we'll do is we'll jump over and I'll show you the prep that I've done to go from 2020 to 2024. Now I'm just going to go through two apps that you may or may not find handy in getting ready for Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. One of them I've been using for years, which is add-on linker so it's available in lights mto i'll put a link in the description below add-in linker allows you to link microsoft add-ons from anywhere on your computer into community folder it did in 2020 i'm not 100 sure yet in 2024 but i can't see why it shouldn't do the same thing it means you can put your folders anywhere on any drives multiple drives Use add-on linker to install a link into the community folder and allow the add-ons to show up in Microsoft Flight Sim. Just open it up here quickly and show you a quick look at it. See, I've been using this for years, really handy. I have multiple drives on my computer, multiple locations for add-ons into the sim. This links them all in to here. Just a quick look at it, I'm not going to go through it. You can... I have set up a folder structure on my D drive. This add-on linker sees that folder structure. It then takes all of the add-ons that I have and puts a link into the community folder, Microsoft 2020 community folder, pointing back where the files are stored on the hard drive. The good thing with this is you can also set up multiple different profiles for I fly a lot of helicopters, general aviation, D-Day, multiple profiles in which you can then select what add-in you want to install for that profile. You can come in here, select that profile, it'll then only install the add-ins you selected. You open up the sim, they'll only load up into it. But again, I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to go to Flights MTO, have a look at it, but I think it's well worth having in the sim to point out to your add-ons on any drive at all. The other app I didn't hear until Murph, on Tuto Murphy spoke about it today was FS2020 Control, which again is available on flightsim.to for free. Put a link in the description below. What this does is this exports out your control profiles from 2020 to either a spreadsheet or a PDF, allowing you to then view them on your computer and add them back into 2024. It won't import them from the spreadsheet or the PDF into 2024, but what it'll do is it'll give you a view of all your control settings so you can match them up in 2024. Put a link in the, in the description. It's just a case of downloading it. it. Comes down as a zip file. Once you unzip it and do set up, it may ask you for another little app to install. I can't remember what one it was, but you can install that as well. Once that installs, open up your 2020 flight sim. Open up FS2020. It'll then connect to the flight sim and it'll bring in all your control settings. I have only a few here. It'll show you all your control settings in here. You can then either export it out to a PDF, clicking on PDF, it'll open it up normally. If you don't have PDF, Adobe PDF Reader, open it up in Microsoft Edge, or you can click on Excel. If you don't have Excel installed, that's okay. You can open it up in Google Sheets. You just need to find out where it actually downloads the Excel sheet, which is normally enter your users, your documents, FS2020 keys, FS2020 controller. If you go to your documents folder on your computer, under FS2020 keys, you'll see Excel SX spreadsheet in there. That's the PDF I also exported out. 
as I said there it is in Google Sheets. You've opened up a blank Google Sheets and go to file, open, browse. It should let you upload from your local computer up to Google Sheets. There it is in Google Sheets for you. you. Don't need Excel installed. You can open it in Google Sheets. You can see all your controls in there and your control settings. Say so that's my Bravo one. Take it again export my yeah export all of these you can you just click on them export see where you want to export them to put them all under here should export them out there you go it's exported that out i don't have much of them set up you may have a lot of them again you can export them all out and then go into your google sheet that you opened upload browse there you go so throttle base import that in so you can import them in there and have them in an excel in a spreadsheet for you to to look at to set up in 2020 fortunately it won't import them in there is no import into 24 from this but good that you can export all your profiles out so you can see what your settings are that you don't have to go from scratch again so hopefully that fs 2020 controls should help a few Oh, in this part I'm going to talk about NVIDIA and the NVIDIA drivers for your GPU. At this stage, everybody should really be on NVIDIA app. If not, you might need to update your NVIDIA so that it's NVIDIA app and not NVIDIA experience. Once you have the NVIDIA app installed, click on the NVIDIA app. Inside NVIDIA app, the good thing with this is it's out of beta now, so it's in full work in order under drivers see here i have a driver is available so installed so you may have a download to download the driver i done that a second ago what i'm going to do is step through how to install the updated so for me i have 566.14 installed at the moment actually no sorry i don't have that installed at the moment that's the one that i'm going to install to install it what i normally do is i go download then i click install i go for the custom install under here you'll have three options the graphics driver itself so i'm going from 561.09 up to 566.14 you've got the physics systems software normally if you look at it it's probably the same version so i normally untick that and also with the hd audio driver i normally untick that as well that's nvidia's hd driver Again, that's normally sitting the current version there. I then click on, and I think this is the most important, clean install. It will remove all the old drivers and reinstall new drivers. Sometimes if you go express, you can have all problems and existing drivers trying to install over other drivers. So I do a clean install. You click on that, continue. It's going to install do a reboot of the computer and when it comes back then we can check that everything is okay okay so it went through the uninstall of the old drivers and the install of the new drivers for 566.14 what i normally do at this stage is i'll do a restart you don't nvidia doesn't ask you to do it but it's always best to do a restart a reboot of your machine after you do an install of anything at all, software or drivers. So close that and we'll close in video and we'll do restart. Once we come back then we can do a check to make sure it's all installed okay. Okay, so now that the PC has booted up again, we can double check that the graphics driver has installed okay. Down to the bottom right here, we go to I click and left click an NVIDIA app to open it. Go to drivers, see that the driver has installed and you have up to date under the drivers. While we're in here, one other thing that's good to change is going to graphics, global settings, under power management mode. If you have it set on normal, I would advise to set it to prefer maximum performance. If you have a good GPU, 20 series, 30 series on, well able to perform at maximum performance more than normal should help you can see here what it tell you what it does should be quite okay to set it to maximum performance so that's your nvidia graphics driver up to date so in this part of the 2024 prep we're going to show you how to get rid of the 
DX shader cache on your computer from the local folder and the local low folder. This will improve the smoothness of your sim. It's always good to get rid of these shader caches anyways. So the first thing you need to do is open the NVIDIA app, go to graphics. I just have a link up here. You can always go down to the bottom right hand corner. It's normally click on the little NVIDIA. You'll have right click video app, it'll open up the same thing. Go to graphics, global graphics. Look down through the list, find shader cache size. Should be set to whatever size you want. I have it set to unlimited. Need to disable that, that and restart your computer. Very first thing to do. Now that your computer is restarted, first thing we're going to do is go down to the search, type storage. You should see a little thing called storage settings. Click on that. If you don't see that, you can always click on settings. It'll bring you into the same place and you can find storage. Under the storage, we're going to temp files. These are where we can remove temp files, big files that we don't need, downloads, different things. This stage we're not going to do that we'll do that later so untick everything in here except for directx sh shader cache that ticked okay so double check you've everything on ticked except that one i can remove files that will do the first removal of dx directx shader cache which is only a couple of bytes or kilobytes close that next one we need to go to is on the local cache so i have a shortcut up here just to make it easy open up that file so where it normally sits is under your c users be your username app data local nvidia inside the nvidia we have gl cache inside that gl cache folder we can get rid of the folder in there with all the crazy looking numbers on it inside that folder there's more folders so we can go back to Say so see users, username, app data, local, NVIDIA. You're looking for a GL cache folder. Don't remove the GL cache folder. Go inside the GL cache folder. Move that folder. That's gone. If for any reason that won't remove, it's because you haven't done the reboot. So you need to do the reboot first of all. Next one we need to do is we need to go back a few levels. Back to app data, local, low. In there you'll find an NVIDIA folder. In there you'll have per driver version in dx cache we can get rid of all of these it's okay that let's delete that should be empty let's go and just empty your recycling bin make sure that's gone it's all the files gone open your nvidia app again go into your graphics full settings scroll down to find shader cache size i always set it unlimited it's up to you you can set it to gigabytes if you want i set that to unlimited and that should be all of your shader cache, DX shader cache removed. I would normally at this stage do another reboot. It's always good to do a reboot after it. Should be able to then log into the same and find it a lot better, smoother and running better. Just a note, the first time you log in, you may find it a bit slower because it's repopulating all the files again. Next, we're going to go through windows cleanup and a few windows things that should be able to be disabled to help you with the performance of the same and your computer as well startup apps so you again search startup apps in here you can unselect all the apps whatever app you want to stop from starting from startup otherwise they will start up and start up i normally disable most of these they want the hd sound left on up to yourself you can go through the list and see that's my antivirus needs to be on of course other ones that don't really need to start up until you cl click on them you can untick them here that is the windows startup apps and how to disable those next thing i would do is clear out any temp files or large download files that you don't need anymore to do that you go again into search just type in storage click on storage settings we're in here before for the video click on temp files this time we're going to go with temp files we cleared the shader cache out with the video Change your cache clear out. You can untick that. Internet downloads up to yourself. 
if you want to remove downloads but normally that'll clear out all the files in your downloads folder you may not want to do that if you clear out that it'll clear out all your download folder i normally do that manually i'll go in and clear out the downloads whatever this click on remove files just clear out temp files free up a bit more space on your hard drive then finally i'm going to disable a few things three things in device manager i didn't realize these could be causing issues with the sim until i watched a video by tutor murphy and yet he advised that these three options may cause stutters and issues with the sim so it's advisable to disable them if you can always re-enable them again it's just a fact just a case of us if we go into search and start typing device under device manager under device manager this is where it manages all your devices on your computer or your laptop or windows manages them first thing we're going to go to we're going to go to system devices so open that drop down scroll down to high precision event timer you can right click that don't click on uninstall device click on disable device because we can re-enable it again if you ever want to re-enable it what that does from what Murph was saying is that that is what looks after if your computer has a pause or an issue with an app this windows high precision event timer kicks in and shuts down the app if it's having an issue the issue is the issue with that is that Microsoft Flight Sim takes a little longer to come out of if it's having a stutter or a pause than a Windows app normally. So you may find that your Microsoft Flight Sim could take 10 or 15 seconds to come out. The problem with this high precision event timer is that it's talking five or six seconds. So it will shut down, crash you to desktop in Microsoft Flight Sim before the Flight Sim gets a chance to actually recover. So it's good to disable that one. The other one he advises to disable is called Microsoft Hyper-V. Infrastructure drive us a flipping mouthful. What this does is if you have a virtual machine or if you're working with virtual machines, anybody that's working with them will know what this is. If you don't know, <laughs> if you don't if you're asking what the hell is this that means you don't have any virtual machines so you can disable this as well just to explain what this does as murph said this is constantly in the background polling out to see if you have any virtual machines and connecting to them in the same when you're flying it's in the background asking is there any virtual machines and it can cause stutters as well so again you can disable that as i say if you don't know what it is you're not using it anybody that's using virtual machines will know exactly what that driver is for then the last one finally is under sound video and game controller in here you will see possibly see uh, nvidia high definition audio that is the audio that nvidia downloads with its graphics driver Again, you can disable this because it is not working on your machine with any sound audio device at all. It's in videos one. Advise that that could cause stutters as well. Again, if in, if you disable any of these and you find that there's a problem with your computer, you can come back right back in again and just re-enable them again. As long as you disable device or, or enable device don't uninstall driver uninstall device just disable device you can re-enable them at any stage later so that's all that i've done to get ready for my migration from 2020 to 2024 hopefully uh, there's a few things in there that might have helped a few of you out anybody has any extra things to think might be handy just drop them in the comments below or if you have any questions drop them in the comments and i'll try and get back to you hopefully you're all excited as i am I'm all as ready as we can be to get into the new sim until then we'll chat to you later take it easy bye